Hi, everyone. Greetings to you this Wednesday night in the middle of this Lenten season. My name is John Boggs. I'm pastor here at Divine Savior in West Palm Beach, Florida, and it's our privilege to bring to our Divine Savior churches the Lenten devotion for tonight. We begin this evening in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We'll join together in singing a, a variation of Psalm 73. It's produced by our member Tracy Fedke. You're welcome to join in wherever you hear the refrain being sung. And in the middle of the psalm tonight, you'll also hear what will be the focus of our reading from Psalm 73. Surely it is God, surely it is God who saves you. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted, and every morning brings new punishments. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. Surely it is God, surely it is God who saves me. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it's not fair. We've all said that before, haven't we? Whether it's a high school football player that is upset because he's worked so hard and done everything the coach has asked him, and yet the other guy gets all-conference recognition. Maybe it's been said in the middle of 
a job. As two people are up for a promotion and the one gets it and the other blurts out those famous words. Growing up as the oldest of eight children, pizza was a very exciting thing for us. But as mom would put the pieces out on the different plates for the children, if you got one of those pieces that had the big bubble, all of us have seen that before, that's not the one you want. More than once, upon receiving that, myself or one of my siblings would just cry out, it's not fair. That phrase is really almost the lament of the entire second half of the book of Psalms. Uh, the writers, one after another, after another, beginning with our psalm tonight, Psalm 73, would cry out, it's not fair. They were lamenting that for Israel. Because Israel saw everyone prospering around them. They, they saw the Babylonians, they saw the Assyrians, they saw the people to their north and to the east and to the south, and all of them seemed to be doing great while they were constantly afflicted with troubles and hardships and the constant threat of being overcome. Well, we get that, don't we? It's not fair was not just a lament from Old Testament Israel. It's not just a lament from earlier in our lives. It's a lament that is heard over and over and over again and comes from hearts which leads into our mouths that describes our lives. Have you ever thought to yourself, woe is me? I, I don't know who taught me, but when I was younger, I learned the kid's song, and it's a horrible kid's song. It goes, nobody likes me. Everybody hates me. Let's all go eat worms. It doesn't make a lot of sense, but it does describe how we so often lament the bad things that happen in life, that we want to throw up our hands and say, woe is me. We want to ask, hey God, is there any benefit to being a Christian? And that's exactly what the psalm writer says today. This is verse 13 and 14 again. Surely in vain I have kept my heart pure and have washed my hands in innocence. All day long I have been afflicted and every morning brings new punishments. Woe is me. It's not fair. We've all been there. We've all said it. And yet, then we remember First of all, maybe we remember that appearances can be deceiving. That the people that we think are prospering and have everything figured out are struggling just as much as we are in life. But there's something more that we have to understand and come to grips with. And it's what the psalmist shares with us this evening in verses 23 through 26. Yet I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, and afterward you will take me into glory. Whom have I in heaven but you? And earth has nothing I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. My dear friends, I know that the struggle is real. But the struggle is also different. It affects all of us in different ways, in different amounts, and in different times of life. We all struggle. And yet nothing can take away not only what our God gives to us in this life, but also who our God declares us to be. This Lenten season is one of repentance we come to our God on Wednesday nights. We gather in worship on Sunday mornings and we say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Repentant hearts cry that out. But repentance just isn't saying, Lord, I've messed up. I'm struggling. It's also trusting in the Lord for forgiveness. It's trusting that his son did everything needed to wash us clean in his blood, to give us a new life that comes through faith, and to assure us 
that whatever happens in this life, our eternity is with him in heaven. What a beautiful thing that is, that a, be, that a believer's treasure in life is really God himself. And that changes stuff, doesn't it? It changes our cries of unfair. It, it changes, it's, it mutes our, our wants of, uh, to get ahead of other people. It, it refuses to let us just walk through life saying, woe is me. Because we realize that what isn't fair is that Jesus died for us. What isn't fair is that we don't get what we deserve. What doesn't, what isn't fair is that salvation is ours by grace alone. God's undeserved love for our souls, which we cling to through faith in him. No longer a, a young oldest child of eight and now being a father of four, I'm usually the guy that brings home the pizza. And there are times when I have to dole it out and every once in a while, there's one of those big bubble pieces. And I have to decide who gets it. Sometimes it's me. Sometimes it's one of my kids. Whether it's sitting around the dinner table, whether it's in your workplace, in school, whatever station you are in life, you're going to hear the phrase, it's not fair. Just remember, though, what's really not fair is how much our God loves us. Hold on to that truth tonight. Wake up with that treasure tomorrow morning. Live in God's grace throughout the week and for all eternity, all by grace alone. Amen. We bow our heads and pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, there are things in life that do not go the way that we want them to. We struggle we cry out, woe is me. We want things to be better or at least better than the next person. And then, Heavenly Father, your word reveals to us your goodness and love. Thank you for that love, dear Lord. Thank you for your son. Thank you for the price that was paid and the victory that was won. Heavenly Father, lead us forward this Lenten season in your most holy name. As we journey to the cross, Remind us that our sins are nailed there, that we are washed clean, and that you call us yours, now and forever, all because of Jesus. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. We conclude our devotion time tonight by joining in singing verses 1 and 2 of hymn 439, Lord, take my hand and lead me. Verse 1 will be sung by a soloist tonight. Feel free to join in as we sing God's praises in verse 2. in peace.
peace I go. Thanks so much for joining us here in West Palm Beach, Florida tonight as we gather around our God's word and worship his most holy name. If you're visiting the online service for one of our campuses tonight and you'd like to learn more about Divine Savior, check us out at any time at divinesaviorchurch.com. Following a short postlude hymn, the study questions will appear on the screen. Feel free to just hit pause and discuss them with the people that you have the pleasure of spending time with this evening. Have a great night.